Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast series, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Episode 2, Mischief in the Wood. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Lord, what fools these mortals be. I forbid his bed and company. You rat rotten! Am I not your lord? If so, I'd be your lady, but I know. When you have sneaked away from fairyland and in a shepherd's shape then sat all day, you play on corn pipes and write verses to a love-struck shepherdess. <laughs> Why are you here? Come from the farthest mount of India? <laughs> Perhaps because the bouncing Amazon, your leathery mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How can you say this? Oh, for shame, Titania. You make your cracks about Hippolyta, knowing I know your love to Theseus. Uh, Did you not lead him through the glimmering night from Paragania, who he ravished so, and make him break his oath to fair ageless with Ariadne and Antiope? These are all deceptions made of jealousy. And never... Since the middle summer spring, met we on hill, in dale, forest, or field, by man-paved fountain, or by nature's brook, or in the beaches ringed about the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But all your sneering has disturbed our sport. And so the winds, which blow on us as though they seek revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every swelling river made so full that they have flooded all the lands around. And so the ox has stretched his yoke in vain. The plower lost his soil, and all his corn has rotted well before it grew its beard. The sheep pens empty in the flooded field, and crows are fattened by the rotting flock. The fields for sporting are filled up with mud. The tidy mazes in the garden now, from lack of feet, are indistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter cheer. No hymns or carols bless the cursed night. And so, the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases now abound. And we, through this disease and sickness, see the seasons alter. Frightful freezing frosts make cold intrusion on the crimson rose. And on the chin and crown of Harmony's god, a fragrant circle of sweet summer buds is, as in mockery set, the spring, the summer, The pregnant autumn. Angry winter now exchange their qualities. The world, amazed and frightened, now knows not who's who. And this same family of evils comes from our debate. Born of our disputation. 
We are their parents and their ancestors. Do you propose a fix? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little fairy boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land took not the child for me. His mother was a worshipper of mine. And in the spiced Indian air by night, most often did she gossip by my side and beach beside me on the yellow sands. We'd comment as the trading ship set sail, when we had laughed to see the sails open up, becoming billowed by the wanton wind, which she would imitate with pretty steps, her belly thus ballooning with my squire. She then would travel all about the land to fetch me presents and return again, as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal, of that boy did die. And for her sake, I'm rearing up her boy. And for her sake, I will not part with him! How long's your plan to stay within this wood? Perhaps till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently join in our dance and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, avoid me, and from you, I'm gone. Give me that boy, and I will go with you. Not for your fairy kingdom! Fairies away! We'll only bicker if I longer stay. Go your way! You shall not leave this grove till I torment you for insulting me! <sighs> My gentle puck, come over here. Remember since once I sat upon an ocean's rock and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back performing such a sweet, harmonious tune. The stormy sea grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot from their orbits, mad to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but you could not, flying between the cold moon and the earth with all his arrows, Cupid taking aim at a fair virgin looking to the sunset. He shot his love shaft deftly from his bow, like it would pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I then saw young Cupid's fiery shaft grow inundated by the watery moon. Oh. The queenly virgin, safe and on her way, in maiden meditation, fancy free. Oh. So, I took note where Cupid's arrow fell. It fell upon a little western flower, at first milk-white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. <laughs> Fetch me that flower, the herb I showed you once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make the sleeper madly fall in love upon the next live creature that she sees. Fetch me this herb and hurry back again before a giant fish can swim a leaf. I'll make a circle round about the earth in... 40 minutes! Once I have this juice, I'll watch Titania when she's asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she then waking looks upon, be it a lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or busy ape, 
she shall pursue it with the soul of love. Before I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, she'll then surrender up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible, and Demetrius. I will overhear their comments. Oh, oh, Demetrius! Demetrius! I love you not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? I'll murder one. The other murders me. You told me both of them sneaked in this wood, and I am here wandering about this wood because I cannot meet my Hermia. So go! Vamos! And follow me no more! You draw me to you like you are made of metal, and yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Give up your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Um, do I speak of love? Or well, rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot, love you? And Ian, for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Ew. Like I'm your spaniel. Use me, spurn and strike. Neglect me. Lose me. Uh, only leave me free, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What lesser place could I request your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you would use your dog? Ah, don't tempt too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on you. And I am sick when I look not on you. You put at risk your virgin reputation. Hmm? To leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not to trust the dangers hid within the night so vulnerable in this deserted place to risk the worth of your virginity your valor will protect me for it is no night when i can gaze upon your face and so i feel i am not in the night nor does this wood lack worlds of company for you from my perspective are the world then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? Oh, I'll run from you and hide within the bushes and leave you to the hungry animals. The wildest of them don't possess your heart. Run when you will. The story shall be changed. <sighs> Apollo flies and Daphne keeps the chase. The dove pursues the vulture and the deer makes speed to catch the tiger. <laughs> Helpless speed when cowardice pursues and courage flies. Uh, I, I will not stand your questions. Let me go. Mm. Or if you follow me, then have no doubt that I shall do you mischief in the wood. You in the temple, in the town, the field, make mischief. Uh. Oh, for shame, Demetrius. Your flaws reveal the weakness of my sex. We cannot fight for love, as men may do. It's better we're pursued than to pursue. Uh, 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 oh, I'll follow you and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Oh. <laughs> Farewell, my nymph. Before he leaves this grove, you shall leave him, and he shall seek your love. Have you the flower? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray, give it to me. <sighs> I know a river bank where wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows. Quite over canopy with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses, with eglantine. <sighs> Titania sometimes sleeps there through the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake sheds her enameled skin, a bed so wide to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll daub her eyes. Where once she hated, she shall fantasize. <laughs> you, 
To the grove let your attentions turn, for there I saw a boy most cruelly spurn a girl from Athens. There anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing that he spies may be the girl. To find him, I attest that in Athenian garments he is dressed. Apply the juice with care, that he may prove so loving on her. She'd such love remove. Let's meet before we hear the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Come, now with dances and a fairy song. Then, for the third part of a minute, leave. Some to kill insects in the musk rose buds. Some war with red mice for their leathern wings to make my small elves coats. And some to hush the noisy owl that nightly hoots and wonders at our quaint doings. Sing me now asleep. Then to your duties, I, and let me rest. And one, and two, and... You spotted slaves with double tongues. Thorny hedgehogs we not see. Boots are not meant to no wrong. Come not near our fairy. shall appear when you wake. It is your dear. Mm. Wake when some vile thing is near. Your fate with wandering in the wood. To tell the truth, I have forgot our way. Oh. We'll rest now, Hermia, if you think it good, and rest together till the break of day. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, so be it then, Lysander. Find a bed, while I upon this bank will rest my head. 
One piece of earth can hold the heads of two. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, me and you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> mm. uh. Hey, good Lysander. For my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. <laughs> Embrace the sense, sweet, of my innocence. My love is speaking meaning no offense. I mean that my heart into yours is knit so but one heart <laughs> then we can make of it. Two bosoms chained together with an oath, united by one heart between us both. With me, no bedroom would you dare deny. For lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. <laughs> Sender riddles very prettily. Ugh, curses on my manners and my pride. If Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. Mm -hmm. But, gentle friend, for love and courtesy, ugh, mm. lie further off. In human modesty, such separation as may well be said becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. Ah, ah, ah. So far be distant. <laughs> and good night, sweet friend. May love remain until your sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer say I. But with life's end I'll bid my love goodbye. Here is my bed. Soon let us both be dozed sad. <laughs> with half that wish the wisher's eyes be closed. the forest have I gone? Athenians, I found me none, on whose eyes I'll make example of this flower's forcefulness in stirring love. Uh, night and silence. <gasps> Who is here? Clothes of Athens does he wear? This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden, sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Oh, pretty soul, she does not lie near this rude, impetuous guy. Ass! Upon your eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When you wake, let love Forbid all sleepiness on your eyelid. So, awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Demetrius! Demetrius! Stay, though you kill me, sweet Demetrius! Helena! I order you to stop this. Oh, uh, will you leave me lonely? Say not so. Stay at your peril. I alone will go. Oh, I am breathless from this lover's chase. The more I pray, the lesser is my grace. For Hermia's happy anywhere she lies. As she has sparkling, attractive eyes. What made her eyes so bright? Her salty tears? Well, my eyes get a washing more than hers. Oh, no. Nope. I am as ugly as a bear. For beasts that meet me run away in fear. For sure, it is no marvel that Demetrius does like a monster flee my presence thus. What would my lying looking glass surmise to make compare with Hermia's gorgeous eyes? <sighs> But who is here? Lysander, on the ground. <gasps> oh, dead. Or asleep. No wound or blood is found. Hmm. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake! <gasps>
And run through fire, I will, for your sweet sake. Uh -huh. Transparent Helena shows nature's art. I once saw bosoms, now I see your heart. Where is Demetrius? Ooh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What, though he loves your Hermia? Lord, what though? Oh, yet Hermia still loves you. Be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do resent the tedious time that she and I have spent. Huh? Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who wouldn't change a raven for a dove? Oh. Oh. The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason tells me you're the finer maid. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Things growing ripen not until their season, so I, being young, just ripened now to reason. Oh. And touching now the point of human skill, for reasons now commander of my will, and leads me to your eyes. Where I, oh look, love stories written in love's richest book. Oh, why was I to this cruel mockery born? Hmm? What at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Uh. Is it enough or not enough, young man, that I did never know nor never can deserve flirtation from Demetrius' eye? But you must mock me with a blatant lie? Uh, Good Lord, you uh, do me wrong. Uh, I, Good Lord, uh, you do, no. in such a crushing manner as you woo. But farewell then. I must by chance confess, I thought you ruled from greater gentleness. No, no. Oh, that a lady who one man refused should of another come to be abused. Oh. She sees not Hermia. Mm. Hermia, sleep right here and near Lysander, mm. dare you not appear. For as a surplus of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings, or as the falsities mm. that men do leave are hated most by those that they deceive, so you, my surplus and my falsity, of all be hated but the most of me, and all my powers, use your love and might to honor Helen and make me her knight. <laughs> no. No. Oh, oh, help me, Lysander, help me. Oh, do your best to pluck this crawling serpent from my breast. I me. Oh, how scary. Oh, what a dream was here. Lysander, look at me. I quake with fear. <laughs> I dreamed a serpent ate my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander? You ignore me? Lord? Lysander! What? Out of hearing? Gone? No sound? No word? Ugh. Where are you? Speak to me, and if you hear, speak of all lives. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I'm fainting now with fear. Oh, oh. No? Then you're not near me that I see. Either death or you I'll find immediately. Play On podcast series, A Midsummer Night's Dream, was translated into the modern tongue by Jeff Witte and directed by Catherine Eaton. Sound designer, Arjun Chef. Sound engineer, Sadaharu Yagi. Dialogue editor, Larry Walsh. Executive producer, 
Michael Goodfriend. Senior Producer, Miriam Lauba. Managing Producer, Robert Cappadona. Coordinating Producer, Taylor Bailey. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. The cast is as follows. Alexandra Henriksen as Helena. Amari Cheatham as Oberon. Armando McLean as Aegeus and Snug. Cedric Lamar as Flute and Mustard Seed. Christopher Livingston as Demetrius and Peas Blossom. Daisuke Tsuji as Pak. David Fur as Theseus. Kopal Kivan as Lysander. Jamie Ann Romero as Hermia and Cobweb. Gina Yi as Quince and Moth. Jen Harris as Bottom. Manila Luzon as Hippolyta. And Michelle Beck as Titania. Additional support was provided by Voice and Text Consultant, Rebecca Clark Carey. Equipment and Recording Engineer, Tommy Freed, the Senior Manager of Business Operations and Partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts, is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On Podcast series, A Midsummer Night's Dream, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. For more about the series, go to playonpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. Bottoms up. <laughs>